Let's continue with lesson six, starting with equations with decimal numbers. Uh, for some of these, just, we're just going to kind of solve them. There's not much teaching. You just kind of solve, and I'll show you how to do it. Uh, example 6.1 says solve this. I forgot the x. Solve this equation. Now you could just subtract 0 0.4 from 2.05 and then solve, but there is a what I think is an easier way to solve. This one has the three in the thousand spot, fours and tens, fives and hundreds, but this three is in the thousand spot. So we can actually get rid of all these decimals by multiplying everything by 1,000. Now you can look at it multiplying 1,000 or you could just look at it as moving the decimal three times. Now if you do it to this one, you got to do it to all of them. So this one moves the decimal three times. You fill in those little spots with zeros. So it would be 3x plus 400 equals, move the decimal, 2050. And now we have an equation that I think is a lot easier to solve. Let's get this up just a little bit so you can see. 3x plus 400 equals 2050. We solve minus 400. We get 1650 equals 3x, and when you solve for that, x would be 550 after you divide by 3. So that is example 1. So when you see those decimal problems, you could um, multiply it uh, by whatever you need to in order to get rid of the decimal. Example 6.2 is a word problem. I don't have this one written out, but uh, <clears throat> for these decimal word problems, you can actually use a ratio box. I'll move it up here, a little more room. <clears throat> now, for the ratio box for uh, these decimals, example 6.2 says the students found that 0 0.015 of the teachers were brave or fearless. If 300 teachers fell into one of these categories, how many were teachers were there in all? So what I can do is actually set up a ratio box. And we said 0 0.015 were brave or fearless. Brave or fearless. Um, this is always our total blank. This blank would be the not brave or fearless. And how could we fill those in? Well, total for a decimal, we're referring to decimals here, my total would actually be the full amount. So it would actually just be one. So the not brave box would be one minus 0 0.15 being 0 0.985. But that would be this row. That would be your decimals. Then we look at our actual teachers. And it says 300 teachers fell into the brave or fearless category. So we plug in 300 in that row. And it wants to know how many teachers were there in all. So that would be that blank that we are looking for. Don't need this one. Cross that out. We set up our ratio 0 0.015 over 1 equals 300 over x. Then we can cross multiply 0.015x equals 1 times 300 is 300 and divide to get x by itself and that would be uh, 20,000. x equals 20,000. That's an arrow. And that would be how you would do those. If, if it was me, I'd be doing the, the fraction or ratio box. That's the easiest way to do those word problems, in my opinion. Uh, I actually want to skip to example 6.5, and we'll come back to example 6.4. 
I actually think 6.5 is a little easier to start out for these. Okay, let's look at these word problems. It says find four consecutive integers such that five times some of the first and fourth is one greater than eight times the third. Okay, the first thing, all you really need to know in these word problems, the, the thing that gets you started is, okay, what does four consecutive integers mean? I abbreviated it, but consecutive integers. How you write that out is in this format, n, n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus 3. Because if you think about it, if our answer for n when we solve is 2, then we would have 2, 2 plus 1, 3, 2 plus 2, 4, 2 plus 3, 5. And it would be four consecutive integers. When we have these, we identify this as the first, the second, third, fourth. It goes in order. So now that we know that, we can solve. So we look at our statement. We did four consecutive integers such that five times the sum of the first and fourth. Okay? Sum of the first and fourth. So that's referring to first and fourth. So if we're talking about some of these, we've got to add these together. So we're going to call it n plus n plus 3. First, third. And it said 5 times the sum of the first and third, so therefore we put it in parentheses and 5 times that quantity there. Uh, so we've done up to this point. Then it says the word is. Let's look at the word is. Oftentimes, when you see the word is in uh, word problems, what that stands for is equals. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is put equals for is. Now we've got that done. It says it is one greater than eight times the third. How do we write eight times the third? First, we've got to identify the third. This represents third and plus two. So we write that over here. I'm going to put it in the parentheses because we, uh, we see that it says 8 times. So multiplied by the third. And from there, we almost have everything. The only other thing uh, it says is 1 greater than. So we simply add the plus 1 on the tail end there. And now that we have the plus 1, we can, uh, and we only have one variable, we only have n, we can solve. So we work inside the parentheses, n plus n is 2n. And then we distribute 5 plus times 2n is 10n. 5 times 3 is 15, positive 15, equals 8 times n, 8n, 8 times 2, 16, then we get the little plus 1 at the end. Go ahead and simplify 16 plus 1. Uh, I'm going to need a calculator for that one. Uh, 17, let's solve by subtracting the 8n. We do it to this side. We've got to do it to this side with the like term. 10n minus 8n is 2n plus 15 equals 17. Subtract the 15. 2 equals 2n. You divide by the 2. And we did all that work just to figure out that n equals 1. n equals 1. Is this our answer? No, it is not, because if you look back at the problem, it said find four consecutive integers. Four consecutive integers, we only got the first. So what your answer is actually going to be is n, or sorry, is 1, 1 plus 1, 2, 1 plus 2, 3, 1 plus 3, 4. 
that would be your answer. Uh, one, two, three, and four. Those are four consecutive integers. And that's how you do uh, consecutive integer word problems. Now let's look at uh, example 6.4 and show you one that's slightly different. This one says find three consecutive even integers. So that's different than the last one. That's the only real difference. How you do even integers is like so. We have consecutive even integers. We represent the first one as n. The second one is n plus 2. And then the third one is n plus 4. So say our number came out to be five, uh, 6. Then our answer would be 6, 8, 10. Now quick note, even if it said consecutive odd integers, you would still use this format. I know it is adding plus 2 and plus 4 and that those are even numbers, but, you know, quick example, if your answer was 5, well, if you did n plus 1, that's going to be a consecutive integer, not consecutive odd integer. But 5 plus 2, like our second one says, would be 7, and the third one would be 9. So you do still... Um, you do still do n, n plus 2, n plus 4 if it's consecutive odd integers as well. But let's try to solve this problem real quick. Uh, three consecutive even integers such that 5 times the sum of the first and third. I'm just going to do this one pretty quick. Sum of the first, n is the first, and we're adding them because of the sum. And the third is n plus 4. Then it said five times the sum of the first and third is, we know that is means equals, so now we're on the back half of this problem, 16 greater than nine times the second. Nine times the second. Boom. Oh, and plus 16. 16 greater than. And now we can solve. Simplify these ends in the parentheses to be 2n. Distribute 5 times 2n, 10n, 5 times 4, 20 equals 9 times n, 9 times 2, 18 plus 16, 16 plus 18, simplify on this side, is 34. Uh, combine like terms from both sides to solve for n minus 9n that is n plus 20 equals 34 when we subtract the 20 we find that n equals right over here n equals 14 is that your answer no need three consecutive even integers. So your answer would end up being 14, 16, 18 as your consecutive integers. And that is how you do those uh, word problems. And that wraps up lesson six.